the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. So it's good to see you today on this beautiful day. This is a perfect day, isn't it? It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's too perfect. And what makes it even more perfect is to have Father Vincent with us, so welcome, Father Vincent. You, 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 you perfect our day. Thank you for being here. So let us take a moment now to um, praise God for his mercy, his compassion, which is the source of, of all our life and our discipleship. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that just as we celebrate the heavenly birthday of the Bishop, St. Bonaventure, we may benefit from his great learning and constantly imitate the ardor of his charity. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your risen Son, he who lives and reigns with you, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. and 
justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Can you hear me? It's good to see you. So we're still distancing. Uh, it's going to keep on going for a while. Five new cases. Ah, we broke our record. It's a good smash. Except the only problem is, is that we know that they were travelers. So it was travel related. So we're still doing okay. Now we're still doing okay. Keep it up. Keep it up. Today's, um, you might have heard, you might have recognized in the opening prayer of the collect, that today's the Feast of St. Bonaventure. Do you have any idea who he is? Any idea? Any idea whether he was, it said he was a bishop, but do you have any idea if he was a religious, if he was a member of a religious community? I can tell you that he was. He was a Franciscan. In fact, born around the time, around the time that Francis was doing his thing, um, he's rightly called the, the second founder of the order. Want to know why? Carol, do you want to know why? <laughs> okay. I'll tell you why. Because one of the things about the Franciscan order was that Francis himself, as you probably realize, was really a very charismatic figure. He was just really attractive. I mean, this whole idea of living the gospel uh, virtues, the gospel counsels, to live them like radically. So in other words, poverty, yeah, absolutely, it's in real poverty, not just like just a nice thought or just being, you know, having a little less, you know, getting you know, having one less toaster in your kitchen, that kind of thing. No. I mean, literally, really poor. He had, you know, a, a tunic that he wore, two tunics and one hood, and that was it. And so, it was an attractive thing at that time. Why? Well, because, mm, believe it or not, the church then was still having problems, you know, and, and, and we look at the church today and we think, oh, this is horrible, it's never been this way. Well, to be honest with you, in the 1200s, it was, it was bad too. Um, the clergy, the priests were not well educated. Um, there was corruption. Uh, there was nepotism. There were, you know, there was all kinds of awful stuff going on. So, this is not a, having problems in in the church is not a new thing. Why, uh, why should that not surprise us? Well, because it's a it's 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 divinely inspired, and of course, if by inspired, I just don't mean just the idea, but the fact that the spirit is breathing into the church all the time. Are the ones that would cease to be, but it's also made up of frail humans, and so yeah, indeed, you're always going to find whether it's in the larger church or whether it's in the local church, even you're always going to find blemishes, always. So Francis was a really attractive figure, and, and the, the Franciscan order grew faster than any other religious community that ever existed up until then, and, and even to today, I would dare say. Right? Yeah. So, um, there was an idealism that Francis presented. 
However, the order grew so fast, there were literally hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of friars while Francis was still alive. But Francis, his great talent, his great gift to the church was his, his absolute love of God and his commitment to the idea that the gospel can be lived in a radical way. But he wasn't a good organizer, not by any stretch of the imagination. So, as with all things, even the Franciscan order, as it started to grow so quickly, well, different people were interpreting, you know, what it meant to be a Franciscan, even while Francis was still alive. And so, there were friars that were moving into the cities, still living poverty, but moving into these convents, these, these, these large places where they could live together in common life, and, but to be closer to the poor. So they were moving into these convents that were in these poor areas so they could be closer to the poor and to serve the poor. And then there were others who said, well, no, you know, that, that's still a big house you're living in. So, no, we should be living in caves, just the way Francis probably would want us to. And with, you know, an, uh, a real literal understanding of what, the, of what poverty is, literal. So material poverty. And so they were called the spirituals. Well, they're, as you can imagine then, right? as in any other human community, um, they started to become divided. And so it was Bonaventure who um, was a very smart man, but also a very humble man, and very pious, who uh, became the Minister General of the Order and who basically pulled them together and helped them understand that you know, many charisms were available to everybody and it was actually good for the community. He kind of discouraged a little bit the, the absolute, utter material poverty as just, because, you know why? Because that can become a distraction. That can become a compulsion. So, always, always, the, the, the spirit behind a virtue is the, is the most important thing. So, detachment, as opposed to, you know, going without food and going without lodging, you know, detachment. So, he was, so we literally, he literally, became the second founder of the order, even while Francis' spirit was still fresh in the community. So why am I telling you all this? Oh, one interesting thing. He was made a bishop, which is kind of an unusual thing, but it was, uh, was he was a good bishop. But he was also then later made, not soon after, uh, not, not too long after, made a cardinal. But when he was named to be cardinal, the Pope at the time said, um, he also gave him, he also, he named him and also gave him a, a command, an order, an obedience, not to refuse to be a cardinal. Can you imagine? I don't know. So, there you go. So, he was, he's significant, but I think the thing that's most important about Bonaventure is this notion that he had the ability to recognize that it's important to not pick sides, but to help everybody understand that they're all valuable in the community. And, and we need to do that with each other. This is a very important thing. We need to do that with each other. And how do we do that? The gospel gives us the clue. Jesus tells us that, and you've heard this gospel, you heard it two Sundays ago. Um, it was the, the one with, come to me, all you who, are, who labor. You know. But at the very beginning of it is this notion that Jesus tells us that, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and reveal them to be your infants. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. You want to know a better translation of that? A better translation is, no one knows a Son except a Father. And no one knows a Father except thus, except a Son. So, it really literally is like Father, like Son. We have to be able to appreciate our differences. This is a fine balance that we walk as a community. But it's, it's the best example of what it is to be a Christian, I think. You know, the, the way people are recognizing Christians is when they look at them and they say, see how they love one another. What, it is, what is it again to love one another, remember? It's to will the good of the other for the sake of the other, right? So what does that mean? Does that mean that the other person has to be exactly like you? And has to think like you? And has to, no, of course not. Absolutely not. In fact, if anything, it should be the opposite of that. So 
Like Bonaventure, we are called, each of us, to recognize that what unites us is that we know the Father because the Son has revealed the Father to us. If you want to know how the Father is, what the Father thinks, how the Father acts, what's in the Father's heart, look at the Son. And thankfully, we know the Son because He walked among us and He taught us and He spoke to us and He gave us, uh, an, exa he gave us an example of how to love one another. Ultimately that, that is willing the good of the other for the sake of the other. So he modeled that for us. And so the fine line that we walk, which is the best example to the world of what Christians are, because the world needs this as a witness, desperately, desperately. You can see it going on right now. People are terrified, they're losing their minds, they're polarized, they're on one side or the other, and if you're not on my team, then you're against me. If you're against me, it means I have to destroy you. That's how the world is functioning right now. Always has, but it's really obvious right now. Well, we stand for something different. We stand for this. We're all united in this, but we recognize each other's differences and don't see them as a threat, but we see them as something wonderful that adds value, that adds adds mission, adds, adds, our, adds to our ability to mission, to be a missionary church. Francis of Assisi was an amazing person, and, and rightly a saint, and rightly somebody we need to follow, but he was not a good organizer. Bonaventure, good organizer. Every community needs the variety of gifts. So, how do we apply that here? You and me, we look at each other, and everybody in our local community here, not as somebody who has to be more like me if we're going to be friends, if we're going to get along with each other. But in fact, I should be looking for the differences and rejoicing in that and helping people say, hey, you know what? You've got this special talent that I don't have. I really appreciate that. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have this gift in our community. That's how we should be with each other. It's absolutely contrary. It seems subtle, but it's absolutely contrary to the way, to the, way the world behaves. So, think about that. I encourage you, think about somebody here in the community that you may think, oh, that one. And then look with new eyes at that person and say, What's, what does that person have that I don't have? What does that person have that I actually need, that the church needs? Because I can't bring it to the church. That's what a Christian does. Is that good? Make sense? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. For in the earth work of human hands and become for us the bread of life. Bless Blessed be God. God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine from our people, for the vine with the human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God.
my friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord in his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Amen. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion very offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you have blessed the gifts of Abel that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is. It is right and just that we need our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word, for whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched down his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the God of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and if you willingly into his passion, he took bread giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done. done. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us 
Lord, we pray for every evil and gracious and grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Help each other a sign of peace in the form of a vow.
I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Through Christ, the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ, the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed friar St. Bonaventure, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord in your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.